We're interrupting our normal coverage to go straight to a press conference at the Foreign Ministry here in Tehran. You're watching Press TV, and uh, we've got Manager Mataki from the Foreign Ministry and Michel Aoun, the uh, former Prime Minister and acting president, former acting president of uh, Lebanon in two uh, competing uh, administrations, and someone who's uh, only returned to uh, Lebanon three and a half years ago. Let's I'm listen. Well, we've been uh, interrupting our normal coverage for that uh, exceptional uh, press conference between the former general, former uh, prime minister, and former acting president of Lebanon with Manachir Mataki from the Foreign Ministry of uh, Iran. What a long journey uh, Michel Aoun has taken. Michel Aoun, uh, a Maronite Christian, as uh, Manachir Mataki reminded uh, his audience of journalists, um, once said, uh, we never distinguish between Ali and Pierre or between Hassan and Georges, referring to the lack of sectarianism in uh, Michel Aoun's early life. Uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, heaping of praise on both sides, uh, with uh, Motaki saying that um, uh, Michel Aoun uh, had a close relationship uh, with uh, Iran and that Lebanon had common interests, economic, political, geographical and historical. And uh, he also talked about, uh, uh, Mr. Bataki talked about um, how uh, important a part Michel Aoun played in the 33-day war with uh, the Zionists, as he called them, and uh, which, of course, uh, was won by uh, the resistance movement in uh, Lebanon. He also talked about Michel Aoun's importance in the Doha meetings. And uh, he talked about, um, uh, at first, not mentioning by name, Manasheh Bataki said there were people from tens of thousands of miles away who've been uh, involved in the region and should leave. Something that um, sort of recurred a little later with a question. Well, our multi-talented Ali Risk, uh, our Beirut correspondent, who I believe is also translating uh, the uh, general's words, former general's words. Ali, uh, quite a meeting. What a long journey Michel Aoun has been on. Yes, exactly. I think the most significant thing in this, uh, in this press conference, all this Christian uh, figure part of the opposition, who is now going and taking this uh, this visit to Iran? I think this shows that uh, Iran now is showing its support is not just for a Shiite group, namely Hezbollah, but in general, of course, they have the support of uh, the opposition. This is, I think, the most significant figure. As was said during the press conference, a lot of furor was being made about Michel Aoun's visit to Iran. Of course, many Christian figures, such as uh, maybe Samir Jaja, uh, so some of them had criticised uh, this visit. But uh, the most important thing, I think, the most important thing is that we have a Maronite Christian visiting Iran. I think this, of course, serves Iranian interests maybe more than it even serves Lebanese. Of course, Iran now showing that its support is not limited to one certain group, that it supports the opposition, opposition in, uh, in general. Of course, uh, Mr. Muttaki, as you said, did say some significant things. He spoke about, as you said, ten people 10,000 10, miles away interfering in Lebanese affairs. I think he was referring very clearly here to the United States of America. Yeah, I mean, know, um, what, a, what a disaster for Washington. I mean, anyone uh, monitoring these events uh, from Washington, um, do, do not think it will be seen by most people as a spectacular failure of uh, U.S. policy in the region to have ended up with uh, close uh, brotherly ties. I mean, we saw all the praise being heaped on both sides between these two figures. Yeah, yes, of course. Uh, do not forget that this uh, comes, I don't know if it's uh, any is significant, but this comes uh, just uh, maybe one week after the um, America and Lebanon put together a joint military commission. Now, I don't know if uh, Mr. Mutpaki was maybe referring to that. We're not sure. But yes, it does show a clear failure. Do remember that Michel Aoun previously, when he was uh, not allowed to come to Lebanon, uh, he d did go to, go to the Congress and make a speech, and he had very good brotherly brother relations with the United States. Now, that all changed after the July 2006 war, when Aoun took a very good stance with the, with the resistance. Of course, he took many people in the areas where Michel Aoun is famous, took many people in, many Shiites in. This, of course, did help a lot to America. It appears it did have this ally previously. Now it has lost this ally who has now gone to Iran. So as you did say before, maybe a clear diplomatic victory for Iran, which has been able to attract supporters, not just uh, uh, Shiites and even Sunnis, but now you have uh, Christian, uh, Christian figures. So yes, as you did say, it's, I think America has lost 
the diplomatic game uh, in uh, in Lebanon, and this has been shown very clearly by what we just heard now. Of course, there was one journalist who was talking about outside forces. Manucho Mataki was quick to focus on the United States, but I don't know, maybe it was just me, but I seem to perceive that the outside forces weren't just the United States of America that the journalist in question was asking them about. We didn't actually hear from Michel Aoun. Uh, I presume one of the outside forces that uh, was under question there was, of course, Syria. Yes, uh, of course, one of the outside forces was uh, was Syria. As you do know, there are developments on the uh, uh, Lebanese-Syrian border. Now we have about 10,000 troops, of course, uh, deployed on the northern border with Syria. That was the one country. And don't forget, uh, other regional countries might also uh, be referred to in an indirect manner, such as Saudi Arabia, which, by the way, President Michel Soleiman is visiting right now. So, of course, uh, yes, he's talking not just about America, but about regional uh, forces and the role they may play. As you do know, of course, in Lebanon, many people have alliances with outside forces. Of course, Saad al-Hadidi now is in Saudi Arabia. Some people accuse Saad al-Hadidi of uh, saying that he spends more time in Saudi Arabia than he does in, uh, in Lebanon itself. So, of course, yes, many people talking about the different roles which countries do have to play. Unfortunately, as Lebanon is a very, very small country, of course, there is no doubt that outside countries will always have a role to play in Lebanese affairs. This but, is just the nature. But what do you think? I mean, Lebanese. if, uh, if uh, Iran has managed to be able to play uh, this uh, important broker position in the region, um, there's no love lost, is there, between Michel uh, Aoun and uh, Bashar al-Assad? Uh, actually, that, that remains to be seen, the relation uh, of Michel Aoun and, and Syria in general, the Syrian regime. Now, I, I have to point out that something. Michel Aoun has said that he is ready to visit Syria at the appropriate time. Now, we're not sure if this is going to happen because a visit by Michel Aoun to Syria might be manipulated or taken advantage of by his Christian opponents in Lebanon and hence may have a negative effect on Michel Aoun's performance in the parliamentary elections to be held next spring. So don't expect a visit by Michel Aoun to Syria from now until next spring. After that, yes, you might see, of course, uh, some developments being happened. But Michel Aoun has always said in many interviews that his only problem with the Syrians was their military presence in Lebanon. Of course, now this military presence has gone. The big question is, will it come back? As I just said, we have 10,000 troops, but according to many analysts here in Lebanon, they say that a Syrian a Syria entering Lebanon is still, of course, we haven't reached that stage as of now. But uh, who knows, if we see a bombing, for example, similar to the one which we had in Damascus, where 70 people were killed, many people do say, of course, Damascus has pointed the finger indirectly to those same forces who were behind the bombings in Tripoli, elements in northern Lebanon. So if such a bombing does happen once again in Damascus and the finger is pointed towards elements in northern Lebanon, you might then see uh, the Syrian troops deployed on the northern uh, on the border with northern Lebanon, entering inside once again. And that could actually badly affect the relation between Michel Aoun and the Syrian regime. But for now, if things stay as they are, you might, after the next parliamentary election next spring, you might see a visit by Michel Aoun to Syria.